Hi, I'm Dave with Front Porch Ideas and more. Thanks for joining us for our continuing series on what makes a great front porch. Today we're going to talk about walkways and I'm standing in front of a home that's about to be constructed that'll have a front porch and, and of course a walkway out to the uh, main street. So walkways are uh, instrumental as part of your design or integral into your design of your porch. And we're going to give you some tips and ideas, design ideas. So stick along and uh, join us as we explore uh, front porches and walkways. Let's take a look at this uh, beautiful craftsman style porch. It has a nice concrete sidewalk leading up to it with some wide front porch steps. It looks really great and it is really great. But we can use this to illustrate a couple concepts that you need to take into consideration to make sure that your walkway enhances the look of your front porch. One of them is outdoor scale and this is a really good example of using outdoor scale. As you can see, this sidewalk is probably about six feet wide. The stairs are probably, the steps are probably about eight feet wide. Outdoor scale means that you have to keep things in proportion. Uh, if you used a three and a half foot hallway inside your home and tried to replicate that with your sidewalk outside, a three and a half foot sidewalk for this particular style porch just wouldn't work. It would just look too small. So you want to make sure that things in proportion, that uh, things that you'd feel comfortable with inside, distances and spaces, may be too small for the outside. Another concept that we need to consider is what is called negative space or positive space. Negative space is more open and less secure. As humans, we're wired uh, with a sense of enclosure. Uh, we like boundaries. And so when you have a negative space, it means it's, it's open, that there isn't anything around us to, to give us a sense, a good sense of security. So there's nothing on this sidewalk on either side of it except grass that allows you to feel secure. So there's nothing wrong with that at all, but it's just an idea that you need to consider is what kind of feeling do you want to give to your visitors and family members as they approach your home. While we're on this particular porch, we can also note that it's, it's symmetrical in design as opposed to asymmetric. Symmetrical tends to be more formal. You have like things on either side of the porch. You can see the uh, foliage on each side, grass on each side, so it kind of balances itself out. So it's very symmetrical and it gives it a little, more, a little bit more formal appeal as opposed to asymmetrical, which is a lot less formal. With that in mind, let's take a look at another walkway. This walkway is more, has a more positive space, as you can see. It has very defined boundaries. These defined boundaries give you more of a sense of security. As you can see, it's a little bit formal in the sense that you have shrubbery on both sides, but it also is a little bit informal in the sense that it has uh, different types of foliage. It has the trees on one side, shrubs on the other. So let's put the two together and get, let you judge uh, which one that you feel has uh, more of a sense of security or appeals to you most. Now, there's no wrong or right answer. Either one of, either one of these porches is fantastic. In design, uh, sidewalks are great. One is uh, concrete, one is flagstones uh, set in cement. So either one is great, but just take a look at both of them and see which one kind of gives you a better feel overall. You can judge from that what kinds of things maybe for your front porch design you would rather have, more a negative space or a more positive space or perhaps something in between. Another design element that uh, you should consider when doing your walkways up to your front porch is balance. And you want to arrange your side walkways like a fulcrum. You want to offset heavy items with lighter ones. In this case, you have you know, some heavy shrubs near the, near the porch, which are balanced out by the kind of the flower, wildflower gardens, so to speak, at the beginning of the walkway. So this works really well, as you can see. Uh, to kind of balance out and give you a, a sense of not only security, this is what we call a positive space because you have defined boundaries on either side. It looks really great. You, same would work if you have like tall foliage alongside one, on one side, you might have sh smaller shrubs and things on the other side. So that's another thing to consider when you're designing your walkway to your front porch. And Mary and I would suggest to you that you have a goal for your walkway to your front porch and that is you want to strike a balance between the functionality the looks of it, the safety, and the efforts. And we can talk about efforts, we're talking about the topography, you know, if there's steps in the middle or things like that. So you want to strike a balance between all those. And you want to build it to match the scale, materials, and the character of your home. And also think about the, the route, the scenic route that you want to take to your front door versus just a highway, which is, you know, kind of blank with billboards on either side. Not that you're going to have billboards in your front yard, but I think you get the idea. You know, would you rather have folks be able to see things along the way to your front door? or not. And this applies whether you have a very short uh, walkway to your front, uh, front door, like we do, ours is very short, but, uh, or a long one. And even with ours very short, we still have lots of flowers and plants around it. And the other thing is, is it logical? And we're talking about traffic patterns. Is it where people are going to walk anyway? 
trying to put a sidewalk or a walkway to your front porch where people wouldn't normally go that way, it's not going to do any good because what will happen is people will circumvent that and they're going to walk across your yard. Let's talk about shapes. Shapes do matter. Now you have about four different options when you're creating or designing your walkway to your front porch and that is you can have straight, you can have curves, you can do it on a diagonal, or you can do it a mix of those three. So straight walkways are more formal and rigid in designs. Uh, that's pretty, you know, pretty well known if you have a straight walkway. Uh, curved walkways, on the other hand, give you a little bit more flexibility. You can adapt them to sites where they have a little bit of slope or uneven topography. It makes it a little bit easier. And remember, they're going to be a little bit more costly to do that. And diagonal is a little bit more flexible than straight. Uh, not as flexible as curved walkways, but they're more efficient uh, for traffic patterns. So, and if you mix any of those, then you create yourself a lot of advantages in that. So in this particular walkway, which is flagstone, as you can see, has a nice little curve. It could have been straight, but instead this curve just makes it a little bit more interesting. A little bit gives the house and the porch a little bit more curb appeal and, and mystique. Let me give you an example of uh, just changing a straight walkway to one that has a little bit of curve to it. And we can illustrate uh, the effect of shape on, on walkways. In this, you see, here's a before photo. It's a congregate, I mean, a concrete aggregate straight walkway leading to a small, small front porch. It's pretty typical, yeah, but it's very functional. There's nothing. Uh, it's easy to get to. Only a couple steps to the front porch. Uh, it's a little bit narrow, but uh, but it's pretty pretty straightforward and pretty typical. So let's look at the after photo. Now what you see is uh, this is uh, kind of a stone or paver uh, sidewalk. They've removed the concrete aggregate and replaced it with this. And as you can see, it just warms up the front porch and gives it a whole different different look than it did before. So now you have a wider brick walkway in steps. Uh, you notice they've widened the steps also and put them on the diagonal, which is interesting to note also. Uh, they have a brick uh, planter that gives you a sense of harmony. It ties everything together along with that. And they also moved the balustrade to the rail porch railings to make it an open porch. So they did a few things here with their walkway and their porch to give it a whole different curb appeal and it turned out really really nice we think so just a couple notes on this uh, for you they removed the balustrade and you can do that in most most locations you need to check with your building codes as long as your porch uh, is not more than 36 inches off the ground if it's more than 30 36 or more you need a balustrade in this case obviously it isn't so it was easy to remove that and gave it a more open feel and then they put the planters in along with the diagonal uh, steps up to the up to the front porch. So it gives it a great great new look. And it doesn't take much. You can see here's just a slight curve in the sidewalk leading from the main uh, sidewalk up to this walkway to the front porch. You'll notice they made it about as wide as the front steps, which is a really good way to do it. Design your walkway. It just adds lots of appeal. They kind of plan along each side of it so it's more of a positive space. There's a sense of where the sidewalk is and the landscaping makes it really nice. So this is a really good example of just a slight curve can mean a lot. And this happens to be a poured concrete sidewalk. Using curves instead of making 90 degree turns can soften the overall look of your uh, of your walkway. And then you also you get to use nice landscaping and hide a little bit of porch, adding a little bit of interest and in, in element of surprise perhaps. Like strolling along this uh, wildflower garden. Such a pleasant journey to the front porch and just a real pretty pretty setting and you can do a lot with the curves. Curve walkways can accommodate slopes as is depicted here also. Uh, they're really nice for minimizing the number of steps because you're going to follow the lay of the land. If you did this otherwise, you do have one set of steps you see to the right, but if you did this on a uh, maybe a right 90 degree turn or something and kept it level with the uh, uh, kept it extremely level, then you'd have to have extra steps in there. So depending on your topography, you can use curves to minimize that, which is most useful. Now let me show you an example of of a brick walkway. That's a little awkward in design, just to give you an, give, give you an idea of what, uh, what kind to avoid. Now, this allows for some nice landscaping opportunities, but as you can see, it's kind of on diagonals with kind of like 90 degree turns. It makes it a little bit awkward. It's not, uh, we talked about the, you know, the actual route to the front door. This is probably not what typical what somebody would do. Perhaps if this is a little bit more curved instead of the 90 degree turn, it'd work out a little bit better, but it's just uh, a little bit awkward. So you want to make sure that uh, uh, that you take that into account, uh, route of travel, and just, you know, the in route, what people have to do in order to get there. Ideally, walkways uh, have a two-foot minimum. So you don't want a walkway that's uh, to your front porch that's uh, more narrow than, than two feet wide. That's about enough for one person to walk. Uh, a four-foot walkway to your front door 
uh, that accommodates about two people side by side and comfortably. And then if you're for accessibility, you want to make sure that it's five foot wide if there's a wheelchair or a scooter involved to make it easy for turns and, and those kinds of things. So this is a nice brick walkway and it's about uh, probably about uh, four, four to six feet wide. It's a little bit hard to tell in this particular picture. But as you can see in this, it should be comfortable space. You know, the width of the steps, uh, this, this, this is really nice. It has a landing at the bottom of the steps. Uh, a little bit, and then tra which transition into a little bit narrower walkway, which makes it makes it really nice. And this is really comfortable. It, it, it you know it's to scale. We talk about outdoor scale. It looks really great. Any narrower, and, and it just would not not look right in this particular situation. Let's talk about material op options for your for your walkways, which are there, there's so many actually. Uh, there's two types: hard and soft. Hard walkways uh, can be dry laid too, or set into concrete. And basically, soft walkways are you know, you can use wood chips or gravel, those kinds of things, usually uh, more for around the house uh, from your main sidewalk or walkway to your front door around the sides of your house or something. The hard walkways, uh, obviously, are, are your stones, concrete, brick, those kinds of things. So concrete walkways are, are probably the most prevalent. Uh, you can stain them as in this, uh, this uh, nice walkway. This is a stained concrete, and there's many types of stains and designs that you can use. So you have lots of options for stained concrete. Uh, you can do amazing things uh, with that. It comes in a variety of colors, uh, but just uh, so you know, it's permanent. There's no way once you stain it, uh, you're not going to be able to do much with it other than keep that particular color to do that. So uh, just just rem you know note that. This is a brick, beautiful brick sidewalk here. Wide, expansive. Uh, you can create amazing designs with brick. Uh, this is a herringbone pattern, so it's just amazing patterns you can work with. It works well for terrace steps, uh, as this is, uh, and you install it permanently on, uh, onto a concrete bed so it doesn't move or anything like that. So in this particular one, uh, notice the width of the steps. This makes it a little bit easier for travel when you're doing this. Just make sure that, the, I mean, sure not the width, but the depth. The depth is sufficient so that you, when you step on it, you at least have a couple steps before you take the next one. You want to make sure that depth is, uh, depth of your steps is such that it doesn't cause any inconvenience. A lot of people sometimes make it too short and it's really uh, hard to get up. So this is just a beautiful walkway. You might also note the steps, front porch steps, and how they did the, uh, uh, the step railings that come off, the diagonals. Just a really nice, uh, nice walkway design and step design in this particular, for this particular front porch. Another thing you can do is stone. Stone is very popular, and you can do this either lay dry over a sand bed or a crushed stone, or you can also set that in concrete. Stone comes in a variety of colors and designs. Uh, these are flagstone pavers here, and uh, you can get them in whether they're rectangular or odd or those kinds of shapes. So you can do lots of things with these also. And again, these can be laid either in concrete, these are mortared between them, or you can lay them dry and have perhaps gravel. For that. The advantage of having it in concrete, obviously, is movement. It's not going not gonna to go anywhere. Uh, if you lay them dry, you need to definitely have uh, some type of permanent border there so they're in case, so they're not going to move. So those are, those are a couple, couple ones. And I think here, here's an good example of uh, stone uh, pavers that are just laid on top of the ground. Uh, and you can put uh, steppables or something in between them as, as a walkway. Uh, that's another option. Uh, that's really nice, especially if you have some natural, uh, if you're trying to create a natural effect such as this particular walkway and a surrounding foliage that they've used. So that works really well. In this case, uh, you may have some maintenance because some of these will drop. It depends on what your base is that you set them in. I mentioned uh, steppables earlier. In this, this photo you can see that uh, these are actually uh, concrete, poured concrete uh, slabs, I guess if you will, with uh, grass between them. But you can actually get plants that are called steppables that uh, work really well, that uh, you can actually walk on them, uh, and they, they grow really well. And ideally, they're ideal for things like this. So you can place them between all kinds of different uh, walkway materials that we, we mentioned earlier. I'd like to give you a couple of walkway design tips, too, that might be helpful to you. Let's say that you have a uh, small walkway, and you want to make it seem longer. And, you know, it's, it's short, and so you want to make it appear longer. Well, what you can do, one neat trick is, is you just make one end narrower, like you're looking down railroad tracks. So that if, the, let's just say that the uh, portion toward the street, you can make it a little bit nor narrow and then widen it out as you get to your front, uh, front steps. That will make your walkway seem longer. You can vary the foliage or landscaping. You can use uh, larger or more coarse landscaping on one end 
and more fine or textured landscaping on the other. That will also give you a sense of, uh, of distance that you can actually make it appear longer than it is. And then you can also, uh, and other things you can do is like use different materials. Uh, will give you different looks. So if you vary the design of the materials that you're using or within what you're using, like uh, herringbone designs and brick, there's other kinds of designs you can use with pavers and things that will actually make your walkway appear longer or shorter depending on what the effect you want to create. And then if you combine materials, you actually give yourself even more options. So those are just a few tips that you might want to consider uh, when you're designing your front porch walkway. Okay, you have uh, now we looked at both design and material choice options, uh, a few of those to give you some ideas, but you can also do a few other things to enhance the look of your walkway. And it's like adding final touches to it. In this particular uh, walkway, you can see it has a nice, uh, nice gate, kind of a picket fence gate, if you will, with some pedal stilts there. Uh, it needed some steps to follow the topography of the front yard, but this gives you an element of visual security. Actually, if you, you look at this, uh, there's a barrier between you and the in the front porch, but it's very well done and you can landscape around it as they did. And this is uh, just a nice way to add a little bit more interest and charm uh, to your front front porch walkway. In this particular one, you have pedestals without a gate and it's just uh, pedestals with a couple lights, lanterns on top. Again, it, you have a couple steps you have to go up to it, but it's a nice way just to add a little barrier, a little bit more privacy I and mean, call it visual uh, security and not, uh, not physical security, but, uh, but visual as well. So uh, you can do that, and it has a nice landing at the bottom of the steps, uh, and so it's just uh, really a, a pretty charming way to approach your front porch. And this one kind of combines a couple of things. This has a combination of a gate, it's got pedestals, and then it adds a, a fountain in between. So this, you could say, has a little bit more physical, secure, physical security, and since it has a gate, you have to open, and then you have to transition around uh, this fountain to the uh, front porch steps. So, uh, and for this particular home, it works works really well. And we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about accessibility. And this is for people who have limited mobility, when they're using uh, wheelchairs or scooters or, or perhaps just crutches, uh, or just are unstable on their feet and, and just need to eliminate steps. And we kind of mentioned it earlier, but uh, curved walkways are good for this. Uh, you want to eliminate steps, and if you have the right topography, a curved walkway like is shown here can do that and could accommodate a wheelchair or a scooter. And there are specific requirements for, uh, for both, uh, specifically for, especially for, I'm sorry, especially for wheelchairs. Uh, you need so much distance. Uh, there's a ratio, and you can find out more about that on, on our site. We talk more about that. But uh, when you're designing your walkways, you might want to incorporate that. And alleviating having to have a ramp, you can use you actually use your sidewalk and design it, design it such uh, to accommodate that. So and make it uh, very pleasing to the eye, landscape around it, and uh, makes it very easy for people with limited mobility to access uh, the front porch and their front door. Well, we've only touched on a few ideas for designing, uh, creating some beautiful front porch walkways for your home. So we hope this information was helpful and most informative. We have a whole lot more information on our site at porchideas.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to see our other front porch design series on video, our videos on roofs and columns, porch railings, and more. So we hope you enjoyed this. I'm David and Mary at porchideas.com. We'll see you on the porch.